Today's lesson is lesson four of unit 11, more work with sine and cosine functions, found on page 357 and 358. Be helpful if you had a highlighter in your calculator. It's important to be able to determine the sine, S-I-G-N, positive or negative, of the three basic trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, for an angle whose terminal ray lies in a given quadrant. For each quadrant, determine if the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle whose terminal ray falls in the quadrant is positive or negative. We use this acronym, all students take chemistry. We start in quadrant one, all, we write the A for all, and then following the quadrant numerically, counterclockwise. S for students, take T for take and chemistry C. This means that in quadrant one, all of all three trig functions are positive. In quadrant two, the S is for sine, sine is the only trig function positive here in quadrant two. T tangent in quadrant three is positive. That means sine and cosine would be negative in quadrant three. And in quadrant four, C for cosine is positive. So if we are in quadrant one, the sine of our angle is positive, the cosine of our angle is positive, and also the tangent of our angle is positive. In quadrant two, only sine is positive, cosine and tangent are negative. In quadrant three, only tangent is positive, sine and cosine are negative, which makes sense, right? Because tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent or y over x. So if we have um, sine over cosine, negative over negative, that's going to be positive. And in quadrant four, cosine is positive, sine and tangent are negative. So you want to remember this, all students take chemistry, means all students take chemistry. They're all positive in quadrant one, quadrant two, you got your quadrants correct sine is positive quadrant three tangent positive and four cosine positive exercise number two name the quadrant in which the terminal side of theta lies if Sine is less than zero, so meaning negative, and cosine is greater than zero, positive. So cosine is positive in quadrants one and four. In which one of these two is sine negative? Quadrant four. Number two, sine theta is greater than zero, positive. Tangent is less than zero, so tangent's negative. Sine is positive in quadrants one and two, in which one of these two is tangent negative, quadrant two. And you're welcome to pause the video and do the remaining four on your own if you like. Sine theta is greater than zero, positive. Cosine is greater than zero. So sine and cosine are both positive, we're in quadrant one. Cosine of theta is less than zero, negative tangent of theta is greater than zero, positive. 
tangents positive in quadrants 1 and 3, and of those two, uh, cosine is negative in 3. 5, tangent theta is less than 0, negative, cosine of theta is greater than 0, positive. Quadrants 1 and 4 is where cosine is positive. Of those two, tangent is negative in quadrant 4. And 6, sine theta is less than 0, sine is negative, and cosine theta less than 0. So cosine is negative and, uh, and sine is negative, and that's quadrant 3. Okay, next, what, what do we do when the point um, is not on the unit circle? For any point P in the coordinate plane, but not on the unit circle. Okay, so this, this is when point P is not on the unit circle. We plot the point. We draw a segment connecting the origin to the point. Mark our angle theta. Draw a right triangle. Always use the x-axis for the base of our right triangle, never the y-axis. When we use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find the hypotenuse, also known as r, the distance from the origin to the point. Then we use Sokotoa. Or we can memorize that the sine of our angle will equal the y coordinate over r. The cosine of our angle will equal x coordinate over r. And how do we find r? r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So you can either go through drawing. I tend to draw the picture. Um, or you can simply memorize these three things. Okay, so our first point, P, is negative 5, 12, and we want to find the sine of our angle, the cosine, and the quadrant in which the terminal side of our angle lies. So negative 5, 12, I would plot the point. So it would be here in quadrant 2. Connect the origin to the point. Here's theta, always formed with our segment and the x-axis. Never the y, so theta is not here. That would be the, the ray and the y-axis. We always want the terminal ray and the x-axis. Now we draw a right triangle, so we're using the this piece as our base of our right triangle, so we drop a perpendicular. In relation to angle theta, well first this is the hypotenuse of our right triangle. In relation to theta, this is opposite. And this side here is adjacent. What is the length of this adjacent side? Well, it's a length that's equal to the x-coordinate without its sign. That's 5. And this is the y-value of 12. That would have a height of 12. Sine of theta is going to be 12 over the hypotenuse. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So it would be 12 over, well, what is the length of the hypotenuse? This is where we use our Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared, 12 squared plus 5 squared is 169, you can go to the calculator, 144 and 25 is 169, so c equals 13, square root of 169 is 13, which is the same as if we took the square root of negative 5 squared 25 plus 12 squared 144 
25 and 144 is 169. The square root of that is 13. So the sine of theta is 12 thirteenths. The cosine of theta is adjacent, 5 thirteenths. But remember, we are in quadrant 2 where cosine is negative, so don't forget the negative sign. Some Pythagorean triples you should probably famil be familiar with, two of them. You should know um, the 3, 4, 5. These represent the sides of a right triangle and, or, and any multiple of that, right? If I multiply each by 2, I get 6, 8, 10. If I multiply by 3, 9, 12, 15. And the other one is the 5, 12, 13. It's helpful if you know those two Pythagorean triples. You don't have to memorize them. Um, you can always just go through the work. And our next factor size, our point is 1, negative 7. Positive 1, negative 7. There's our point P. Connect the origin to the point. Label theta, it's always with the x-axis, and the ray that we drew from the origin, or the segment that we drew from our origin to point, and in this case, perpendicular, from the point to the base of our right triangle. The length of our legs here, this would be the x value of 1, and this the y value of 7. And use Pythagorean theorem. In this case, 1 squared plus 7 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. That's 49 and 1 is 50. And the square root of 50, we'll just leave it as that, the square root of 50. Or you can simplify to uh, 5 square root of 2. The sine of angle theta, opposite over hypotenuse. So 7 over 5 square root of 2. We are in quadrant 4 though, where sine is negative. So make sure you put negative 7 over 5 square root of 2. Just rewrite this negative. And the cosine of theta adjacent over hypotenuse. 1 over 5 square root of 2. And I said earlier we are in quadrant 4. Exercise number four, the point E, negative 7, negative 24, lies on a circle whose equation is, this is not a unit circle, it's a e circle whose equation is this. Do recognize this as being, all right, a circle with center, 0, 0, and radius squared equals 625. The square root of 625 is 25. If an angle is drawn in standard position and its terminal ray passes through E, what is the value of the sine of this angle? In this case, this is where it would be helpful to just know that, oh, sine is going to equal the y-coordinate over the radius. So our y-coordinate is negative 24. Negative 24, 25 Or if we were to plot the point, oops, wrong direction, negative 7, negative 24, Draw a right triangle.
but this helps that gives away the radius the length of the radius otherwise if I use the Pythagorean theorem root 7 squared uh, plus 24 squared oh, I didn't do the, I didn't add them sorry 7 squared plus 24 squared is 625 and the square root of 625 is 25. Once again, thank you for your attention.